The old new Beetle wore out its welcome. A cutesy piece of retro shtick in the Pixar style that wasn't a bad car, but was just too much of a wink after a few years. But now with the newest Beetle, VW has dropped the word new from new Beetle and grown up its lines quite a bit. We end up with a more macho, cutesy car. Not sure the world's better for that or not. Let's find out as we drive the 2013 VW Beetle Cabriolet 70s edition and check the tech. Now, when I saw we had a 70s edition, I figured we'd find a bag of grass in the glove box and a Hotel California 8-track in the dash. Wrong on both counts. Instead, 70s edition to Volkswagen means this toffee brown color, no other choice, and these wheels, which don't conjure the 70s to me at all. A nice set of gold BVS RS would do that. Now inside you noticed Beetle's got very good materials all around the cabin. Color key dash plate here, that's a nod to the past, to the metallic dash they had in the early days. And you also find we've got this synthetic leather that I think only the Germans can get right. They call this VTEX. The uh, Mercedes folks call theirs MBTEX. It's particularly good in a convertible because it's very durable, but it's got a nice leather feel. We've seen this head unit before. The interface is an unmitigated disaster. You rotate through choices or you can touch the screen and reading what's on and what's not, I can't figure it out. However, your sources are basically all there. AM, FM, you got your optical disc up here, satellite radio for three months, then it's your problem. Aux jacks over here, SD card slot, no hard drive, luckily. No iTunes tagging with HD radio. Bluetooth streaming audio, as you can see, good meta tag support, at least with my Android phone. And while you do have navigation standard on this 70s edition, it's meh. Small screen, again, the interface makes it a real disaster. And while I'd like to use voice command to enter the address to not have to use that, the voice only works with the Bluetooth calling. And even when you do that, the voice command doesn't give you any prompts on the screen for what you could say. So you're endlessly saying help or memorizing commands. Fail, fail, fail. Now, Antoine got in this car before me, and he came back all glowing about the Fender audio, telling me how great it sounds. I figure he's back into the peach whiskey, because I've never heard one of these Fender rigs sound really very good at all. He was right. This one sounds great for some reason. It does two things really well. First of all, it takes crap sources like streaming Bluetooth, fills in the gaps well, and makes them sound good. That's quite a trick. Secondly, it's loud enough and clean enough to overcome road noise with the top down without kind of getting out of shape, being screechy, harsh, or too bassy. And that's at the flat tone settings. So I was very impressed. The only thing I don't like about the sound system is this stupid little thing over here. You can do, let's see, white, blue, or red colored light on those rings around the speakers. That's like a page out of the Scion playbook. Here's my play call. Pass. Now the Beetle is a cabrio. In top nomenclature, that means a soft top that folds kind of untidily on the back of the rear of the car and never submerges and has no cover over it. It's not a spider, it's not a retractable, some would even say it's not a true convertible. Now if you don't like the untidy look of the top when it's down, BW's been good enough to take up most of the trunk with the world's biggest, chunkiest tonneau cover. I can't believe this thing. Really? You put it up here and you snap it in around the top and the back and the sides. My guess is you'll use it exactly three times. Once the day you bring the car home to show it off, once the day you go on that first nice summer road trip, and once the day you decide you're sick of this thing and throw it in the garage. Now here in the engine bay, there's really nothing in common with the old Beetles. The engine's in the front, not the back. It's water-cooled, not air-cooled. And it makes a nice sound when you step on it, instead of sounding like a canary farting. Two and a half liter, side saddle, inline five. It's a real mainstay VW motor. They put these in Jettas all day long. Front wheel drive, as I mentioned. The numbers are very normal because the technology's real normal. No turbo, no direct injection, none of that real fancy stuff. 170 horse, 177 foot-pounds of torque. 
gets this car to 60 in about 8 seconds. It weighs about 3,200 pounds, not terribly heavy by today's standards. And 2127 MPG is fine. You'd like it to hit 30, wouldn't you? But it doesn't. The first thing I was struck by on this Beetle is that the ride quality is very good. I recall the one before not being quite as delightful in that respect. And the power from this engine is responsive. There's not a ton of it, as you can tell from the numbers, but it comes on rather quickly and in a nice linear fashion because there's not a lot of trickery going on here. I like that. Occasionally, the car will get stuck in too high a gear, as just about all modern cars do, and you'll get a moment of flat-footedness. But for the most part, in this sport mode, it just works. And it's a well-done sport mode. When you're in here, it's not too high strung, and yet it does wake the car up. Some sport modes are just too frantic. You can also go to the gate like I showed you, and you can shift in the Tiptronic mode. I didn't find I needed to. Sport mode nailed it. Now, if you want a big gripe about the inside of this car, here's where it is. If you look back behind me, you might see it. There is really poor visibility out to the right and the back where you often look to do your lane change. It's because you've got high headrest back there. That big old cabrio top is piled up behind you, and that is really hard to deal with. I'd rather do a lane change in a Gallardo than in this guy. Unfortunately, there's no blind spot tech available in this Beetle, nor is there a rear camera. So that all conspires to make for kind of a tricky car to maneuver. Just keep going forward. All in all, a fun little driver. On a nice day, it's a great car. On a crappy day, the exceptional thick quality of the roof also makes it a nice car. Okay, let's price our Beetle Cabrio 70s edition. Real simple story. It's 29.4, period. There are no options, at least nothing CNET style. That's the head unit. That's the audio system. Everything is what it is. It's part of a very tight 70s package. You got to like this color, by the way, because there's no changing it either. It's a real nice driving car. It's not a sports car, per se, but it's got good handling, and I was surprised how much I liked it, to be honest.